Area denial setups have started to become common in Destiny, as compared to Warframe and Borderlands with their outright insane levels of map wipes that they can pull off, Destiny's version is more controlled and in place in a very limited method. Things like Warlock's Child of the Old Gods and State of Turrets have made controlling small to large areas much easier in the long run. Now, I would hope Bungie can expand on these key abilities more in the near future for all classes, as I would strongly believe all classes should have one good method of controlling areas without much input. This brings us to today's build focus just on that. I created a build that allows users to shut down areas much faster than normal through Scorch damage, Poison buildup, and see the particles left over. With this build, you can shut down a whole area with a snap of your finger, and the best thing about this is that you don't need to heavily invest into melee or need melee mods to make it work. This is a plain but extremely powerful setup that can make endgame easy mode. Also, it's nutty as hell. So like always, if you enjoyed the channel and content right here, then I would really appreciate a like, a sub, and for you to turn on your notifications as it goes a long way for me. The subcast being used will be Solar, although we are free to use Void, Arc, and Stasis as well. Solar is going to be the best choice though, if you want to aim for a contagious setup designed solely on mass damage. Similar to our last build we did the other day, we should aim for maximizing our abilities for longer lasting effect on the field and then further enhance it with additional weapons and perks that best fit the setup. As Scorch damage is pretty lengthy, we are on the right path in terms of on lasting effects on the field. The only issue here is that our effect goes into action straight away and will disappear after a few seconds, while stasis turrets can last for a good minute or so. Although this shouldn't put you off with trying it first. Now here's what I've aimed for in terms of the setup. For aspects, I have touch of flame that allows solar grenades to last longer and emit blobs of lava around this perimeter. You'll then want heat rises where you can hover in the air for longer, glide, and will grant mini energy while in the air. For fragments, you want ember of ashes so you can apply more scorch to targets, ember of torches where your power mini hits game combatants make you an allies radiant, ember of benevolence while applying restoration. Cure all Radiant to allies grants increased grenade, melee, and class ability regen for a short duration, and Ember of Searing, where Scorch targets grant melee energy back. The key stats are 18 resilience, 100 in discipline, and 50 to 60 in strength. Key mods are Well of Life, where collecting a solar well will give you increased health regen for a few seconds, Bowerful Well for plus 2 wells created, Font of Wisdom for a plus 50 intellect stat. Seeking Wells for allowing Elemental Wells to attract to you, and Elemental Ordnance where grenade kills will grant you Elemental Wells. Although it may look weird that I don't have melee Wellmaker mod instead, considering how the build will revolve around melee damage, this is completely in plan as the use of our grenades will help us get our melee energy back up quickly via the Ember of Searing Fragment. The build will also be designed for endgame appliance as well, as many of the enemies you will face will be too tanky for a melee alone to finish them off, here and there. This is why the setup shown has a high discipline stat and half a melee stat, as I will be using the two in hand. Also, the discipline stat will be regenerating much faster energy we feel for the build as a whole, and thus allow us to freely use other weapons that don't have demolitionists or pugilists built into them if we don't want to top them off. So from here, you'll then want to invest into Outbreak Perfected as the main primary and then Heavy can be of your choosing. Just like the last build, Outbreak Perfected is a perfect weapon for any setup designed for locking down areas or simply enhancing damage further. Its design is simple and is one of the best assorted to use in a team and do surprisingly good damage against bosses without the aid of supers or abilities. Now with the weapon, I intend to use it alongside my powered melee and scorched damage so the damage overall can be felt by all. In action, this will be best used when instigating a fight or midway through a fight, once your melee abilities is in action. And just like Stasis, we can also enhance its base damage even more thanks to being able to proc Radiant more often via fragments and aspects used. It's honestly amazing what a primary exotic of this level is capable of doing on its own or with a really full out setup such as the one shown. For heavy, we have two choices to pick, and either ones are fine. Commeration with reconstruction is a great heavy to have as it will allow you to basically overflow your weapon and destroy a champion or ultra without needing to reload. 
It also shoots fairly good, has good damage and pretty large magazine to rely on. We then have Quilliam's Terminus which is similar to Commoration except that is a high impact weapon and will be firing slower but inflicting high damage. I will say that if you can get the correct max size perks for Quilliam's and then use your origin trait for it, you can get an easy 80 to 101 magazine and then add on the additional damage perks and you get a fairly amazing heavy machine gun to boot. For stats, as previously mentioned, we need to aim for a high discipline stat first and then build up our resilience and strength stat after. The only reason for this is because our discipline stat will be used more often compared to our melee in terms of inflicting easier damage to start. After that, we can then use our melee on top of our grenades to do more damage there and then and also cause an ignition if we're lucky. So with this being the case, I would recommend a max of 100 discipline as we won't be using additional perks such as demolitioners to keep the build going. What we will be using instead is the base benefits of 100 discipline, elemental wells and ember of benevolence in all in one package. If we can rely on this small package and the use of allies as well, we can then get our abilities back much faster than normal without the use of specific perks aimed for them. This then leads us to the key ability being used the most, strength. And this key stat can stay at 50 to 60 depending on how you like to build around it. We won't be using Monte Carlo or Pugilis with the setup, but this time we will be heavily relying on the more refined 3.0 subclass traits. Things like Heat Rises, Ember Benevolence, Elemental World, Absolution and Outreach will be enough to get your melee back quickly there and then. Do not worry if you go overboard with this as having a stat even higher it's fine if you have the space to do so. If you go below 50 though then you may need to use perks such as Pugilis to help but only if you have a weapon and space to do so. 9 times out of 10 you can avoid this and just make do with little energy loss. Leftover wise we have Kinect Cypher mod for making orbs of power via Kinect weapons and Machine Gun Scavenger for more ammo reserves for machine guns. Now as we have the bits covered, here the mods all compile into a list for your quick viewing. For Head we have Resilience, Kinect Siphon and Well of Life mod. Arm we have Discipline and Battle for Well mod. Chest we have Discipline, Film of Shot Plating, Cocos of Dampner and Fond of Wisdom mod. Leg we have Strength, Machine Gun Scavenger, Absolution and Seeking Wells mod. Bond we have Maya Discipline, Outreach Times 2 and Elemental Ornus mod. With just the power of your melee, Exotic and Seaver, you too can make your mini builds and nuke areas and bosses all in one go and this is a neat little setup for those who struggle with clearing tough areas out on their own. When creating a build I want to design a setup that would use dot damage to heavily inflict area deny on small or medium spaces and prevent targets from getting away without first taking a bit of damage. There is many ways to go about this as running a basic Void Warlock or Pseudo Titan with an exotic and weapon of choice is the best and simplest method to run with. However, I believe that if you ever played Glassway or Devil's Lair's boss room, you would notice how easy it is for enemies to walk in and cause havoc for the defenders inside. For this, running with just a basic loadout won't do half the time, so I expanded on the idea of complete area denial to the point of even in death my allies will at least survive a bit longer without me. This is where using Solar Melee, Necrotic Grip and Outbreak Perfected come into play. Using Incinerator Snap for its wide area coverage will allow our solar attack to spread faster and also inflict Scorch damage faster. We then have Necrotic Grip which will activate after death and inflict even more damage onto living targets no matter the size. And then lastly we have Siva that can be used continuously to apply dot damage to all targets while everything else is still ongoing. Simply, at its core, the build up of our damage can rain havoc onto areas where targets try to catch you off guard, which is perfect for a number of contents or GMs in practice. To further expand on this use, the build is very much usable in endgame and I would advise you to give it a try for a new experience in build crafting, but also just to see how chaotic it can become when everything triggers well. However, one last thing to take note of before I go is a lack of melee based perks to help you build up your charged melee again. Now this can be easily fixed with the Pugless perk or using other means to create wells or orbs of power, but do be aware that this can be an issue at times if you use your power melee attack onto a target that is quite tanky and of course isn't the right target you want to use against. Nonetheless, the build is fantastic for those who enjoy playing aerial denial builds in other games and want to carry on that tradition in Destiny 
even if it's not that close, you still got something kind of similar. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like, a sub, and a share. And also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content, banter, and stuff like that. Link is down below. Once again, thanks for stopping by. Stay safe, and I'll see you on the next one.